In more primitive times, it was commonly believed that the symptoms of this disease were the result of spiritual factors, the evil eye or witchcraft. It was known by various names such as the creeping disease, wasting sickness or curse of the nerves. Lacking modern medical knowledge, individuals sought supernatural explanations for this unusual illness. This changed when a French doctor began connecting the dots by performing autopsies on individuals displaying specific symptoms, like uh, speech problems, tremors and visual disturbances. He discovered distinctive place, plaques in the brain and spinal cord. Initially, he named the disease plaques of sclerosis. This term later evolved into multiple sclerosis, highlighting presence of multiple sclerotic plaques. Sclerosis refers to scarring. It was later discovered that scarring primarily affects the white matter of the brain and spinal cord. This finding became a fundamental aspect of its diagnosis. Hello and welcome to Medicine Simplified. Today I'd like to talk about multiple sclerosis, a fascinating and complex illness that we still don't fully understand. We can define it as a potentially disabling disease that affects the brain and spinal cord. It's more prevalent among women and typically affects individuals between the ages of 20 and 40. It results from the loss of the myelin sheet surrounding the nerve fibers. You can imagine myelin sheet as an insulator and nerve fibers as electrical wires. These now exposed wires short circuit and disrupt communication between brain cells. In simple terms, multiple sclerosis can be visualized as a tangled mess of exposed electrical wires that are misfiring. It is believed that the immune system of the affected individual is responsible for this damage. This places it in the group of autoimmune disorders. The exact cause of multiple sclerosis is not known. Several risk factors associated with, it, with its onset have been identified. It's more prevalent among people of European descent, particularly those from Northern Europe. While genetics may play a role, it is likely not the primary factor. Additionally, vitamin D deficiency and certain viral infections are considered risk factors. Individuals with other autoimmune disorders, such as type 1 diabetes, thyroid disease, psoriasis and inflammatory bowel disease may also be at an increased risk. The symptoms vary depending on the specific areas of the brain and spinal cord that are affected. The most common include numbness and weakness in one or more limbs, typically on the same side of the body. Individuals often experience fatigue, loss of strength and decreased dexterity in their hands along with coordination and balance issues. Fatigue is reported by the majority that are affected by this illness. It is often leading cause of work incapacity. Factors contributing to fatigue can include elevated body temperature, depression, sleep disorders and even routine daily activities. Approximately one third of individuals may experience muscle spasms triggered by movement. They can range from moderate to severe and primarily affect the leg muscles. These spasms can be painful and may interfere with movement, work and self-care. However, in some cases, the spasms can help support body weight when there is a leg weakness and treatment may not be necessary. Another common manifestation is Lermite's sign, presenting as an electric shock-like sensation 
during certain neck movements, especially when bending the neck forward. Visual disturbances are frequent and can include partial or complete blindness in one eye. This is often accompanied by pain when moving the affected eye. Other visual issues may include double vision and blurred vision. Bowel dysfunction usually manifests as constipation, but in some it may present as incontinence, meaning uncontrolled bowel movement. Bladder-related issues affect many and can include frequent urination, nighttime urination, uncontrolled bladder emptying and difficulty starting or stopping urination. Some affected individuals may not fully empty their bladders, making them more susceptible to urinary tract infections. Many will also develop a hypersensitivity to heat, which can lead to temporary vision loss in one eye after exposure to heat, for example during a shower or a significant, significant worsening of symptoms when body temperature rises. In the later stages of the disease, complications become more prevalent. They include muscle, muscle spasms and stiffness, paralysis of the lower extremities, epilepsy and psychological issues including forgetfulness, mood swings and depression. There are three main types of multiple sclerosis based on the course of the disease. The most commonly encountered type is relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. This form is characterized by periods of exacerbation or flares where existing symptoms worsen or new symptoms emerge. These flares can last from days to weeks and are typically followed by periods of partial or complete recovery. During these remission phases, individuals usually do not experience any progression of symptoms. After 10 to 20 years, about half of the individuals with relapsing remitting form may experience a gradual progression of symptoms, which is referred to as secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. In a smaller number of individuals, Symptoms progress from the onset, and uh, there is steady worsening without remission. This type of multiple sclerosis is called primary progressive multiple sclerosis. When it comes to diagnosis, a neurologist gathers detailed information about the disease progression and conducts a thorough neurological examination to detect symptoms and signs that may indicate multiple sclerosis. There is no single test that can definitely diagnose this illness. A diagnosis typically requires two or more episodes of symptoms separated by at least one month along with two or more neurological signs indicating a pathological process in the central nervous system with symptoms lasting longer than 24 hours. Additional procedures such as MRI, evoked potentials and lumbar puncture can provide further information. Individuals with the primary progressive forms of multiple sclerosis can present a challenge because they do not experience episodes of worsening symptoms. Instead, disease gradually progresses from the onset. An MRI of the head and the neck can reveal the presence of plaques in the brain, brainstem and spinal cord, which are commonly found in individuals with multiple sclerosis. Evoked potential measures the brain response to various stimuli including visual, auditory and tactile inputs. Individuals with multiple sclerosis typically show different responses compared to healthy individuals. 
a lumbar puncture is a procedure that involves extracting a sample of cerebrospinal fluid using a needle inserted into the spine. This fluid surrounds the brain and spinal cord. The collected sample is then tested for changes in its composition, that is often indicative of multiple sclerosis. Treatment for multiple sclerosis is categorized into three main types – exacerbation or flare therapy, disease-modifying therapy and symptomatic therapy. These uh, treatment strategies aim to slow the progression of disease and alleviate permanent effects caused uh, by neurological damage. Currently, there are no medications that can repair neurological damage once it has occurred. Exacerbation therapy seeks to shorten and alleviate episodes of symptom worsening. Disease-modifying therapy includes various classes of drugs intended to slow disease progression. Symptomatic therapy aims to relieve various ailments associated with the disease. For, for example, if an individual develops depression, antidepressants may be prescribed. Dietary changes can help address constipation and different medications are used to manage pain. Individuals with multiple sclerosis can benefit from medical rehabilitation which includes physical and occupational therapy. Uh, these interventions aim to enhance the quality of life and improve the ability to perform daily activities. Historical data on the progression of this disease over several decades show that during a time when effective treatments were limited, about 50% of affected individuals required assistance with ambulation 15 years after their diagnosis. By 25 years post-diagnosis, this figure increased to 80%. While mortality due to exacerbations or flares of this disease is, un is uncommon, it can happen as a result of complications such as pneumonia. It's worth noting that approximately 20% of individuals affected by the disease have a benign form and never experience disability, even 15 years after diagnosis. If you like this video, you can check another one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.